Amen. Amen. Well, what an exciting day it is today. It's Mother's Day. We're in our series of Step by Step. And uh, today we're going to do something a little different. Um, we have a family who's new to our church and uh, they did the most outstanding thing uh, possible. They um, invited me over to their house for dinner and which is a great way to, uh, you know, allow me to get to know you really well is to cook me a great meal and have awesome dessert. And so I get to know the Andersons really well. And I was just so moved um, in that time of meeting with them because I think so many times we get caught up in sharing these, um, what I call Instagram, Facebook moment lives. You know, it's like, hey, look, Timmy hit a home run. That's awesome. What we didn't show is the fact they struck out the three games previous. And we, you know, we only highlight that one great hit or that one great catch. Or, you know, it's like, I, I saw a meme one time. It says behind every family photo is our parents bribing and threatening their children for a correct smile. And when I saw it, I was like, there, I mean, if you only knew the moments that we, my wife and I went through when our kids were little at the picture people, where, you know, you pay an ungodly amount of money for these pictures. And they're, I mean, un, we, we bribed and we threatened to a way that would probably compromise. If y'all knew the things we went into those moments, it was just smile. This is costing us $400, you know, kind of a moment. And then the picture, that's what we put on the wall. And everybody's like, oh, what a beautiful family. And we're thinking it was not a good day. <laughs> not a good day in our history. We captured this millisecond moment and the, you know, and, but that's what we share and that's what we talk about. And it was just something beautiful sitting down with Tommy and Devin. And they said, well, hey, here's our story. Here's what God's done. Here's the journey we're on. Here's the journey we've been on. And it was just, just, in a, just freeing to say, this is what God has done in our life. And, I, and, and uh, then later on, their son Landon uh, was baptized not too long ago and he, he created a video to share and uh, they showed it to me and I said, okay, I hate to do this to you, but I'm gonna pull the pastor card. We're not showing this to the church right now. Uh, here's why. Later on in May, we're gonna do a series on the family and I would rather not show a 30 second video. I'd rather spend 10 or 15 minutes with you guys on stage and allow the whole, whole church to hear the story. And they were like, I think the video is much easier. <laughs> So uh, they opted. They said, okay, fine, we, we trust you. But uh, so today I'm gonna invite Devin and Tommy to come and join us on stage and share a little bit about their, their journey and, uh, and their faith and how God has worked in their lives. And I uh, want you to hear from them today. So Tommy, I'll let you go first. Tommy, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, those kinds of things. All right, good morning, church, and happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. Um, I've been a longtime resident of Bulverde since the early 90s and um, graduated from Smith Valley High School, and currently work for American Airlines as a pilot, and I own Anderson Aviation here at the um, Bulverde Air Park. And I am up here on stage with my wife, Devin. So Devin, tell us a little bit who you are. Hi, I'm Devin. Um, I grew up mostly in Kentucky, and I've been here in Texas for a few years. Um, I'm a stay-at-home mom to our son, Landon, who's seven years old, and to McKenna, who is 17 months. Awesome. Now. If you've seen the movie Shrek, there's a, they, they talk about how your life is like an onion. You just kind of got to peel the layers back. Okay, so we've got through, this is my name. You didn't give me your age, and that's fine too. But, you know, what we do, here's my kids, that kind of stuff. Let's peel back a couple layers now. Tell us a little bit more about Tommy. Okay, so starting out um, as a child, uh, we never attended church. It wasn't until my grandmother uh, found a small church for us in Bernie, and she invited us to go. We went. And from that point, I was saved. But I never developed a deep, intimate relationship with the Lord at that point. And that ended up leading me into a relationship that I got engaged and we had planned a wedding, but thankfully it never happened. And at that point, I held to the Lord and I said, okay, Lord, obviously I can't do this on my own. Obviously I'm pushing something, an agenda that's not yours. And I gave it to him. I stopped looking and prayed for a wife and a family to come and just a few months after that, uh, my aunt called me and said, hey, I have this wonderful girl you need to go out with. So we emailed a couple times, went out on our first date. And from that point, my faith has only been grown stronger through that whole situation with Devin. Okay. Devin, peel back a couple layers now. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, we went to church every Sunday. I was saved when I was seven years old. After college, I was working for a large church outside of Nashville, Tennessee, and met a guy. 
who um, I thought was also a Christian. We um, dated and got engaged, and unlike Tommy, we got married, um, and thought that he was a Christian and loved the Lord, but um, soon after we got married, realized that his actions and words were not matching up, and we started to have a lot um, of issues in our marriage, Um, but growing up in the church, I didn't think divorce was an option, and so just thought the Lord's going to help make it better. Um, A few months later, I found out I was pregnant and again thought, well, um, this will help our marriage and things will get better. Uh, The baby came and things continued to get worse. Um, My husband quit working and I was forced to go to churches looking for food. Um, It became an unsafe environment for my son with some issues my husband was having. But again, I just didn't know what to do because I didn't think that it was right to leave. Um... So actually on May 8th, 2015, my life was forever changed. It was my first Mother's Day weekend, and I had signed up to dedicate Landon at our church. Um, I had told my husband about it, and he had made plans, I thought, to come, but he never showed up. And so I stood on the stage alone and dedicated Landon and vowed to raise him in church and to point him to Christ and to be the best mom I could be to him. And, and when was that? It was seven years ago today. May 8th. May 8th. Um, and which is just very fitting that you had us come because it was not planned at all. So yeah. <laughs> when he told us the date, I was like, wow, that is total God thing. And so I went home from that, you know, very excited, you know, um, and I went home and opened the door and my husband was completely drunk. And he was very angry with me. Um, He wanted to hold Landon, and I didn't feel that it was safe. Um, And so I was just, let me put the baby to bed. Let me get ready for bed. You know, it's late. And he just got very, very angry. And so I just started praying that night for a way to get out of the house safely that evening because I didn't feel that there might, that we might not be able to. And so as he was yelling at me, um, there came a point that he said, you better get out of this house right now. And I took that as God's open door for me. And I was holding Landon. I hadn't put him down. And we ran out of the house. I grabbed the diaper bag, and nothing was ever the same. Um, I moved in with my parents and Again, just thought, the Lord's going to redeem this, you know. Um, I'm going to one day stand on stages and share how God worked in our marriage, and it's going to be a great story. But as the months ticked by, I realized that that was not the story that God was going to create. Um, And he ended up filing for divorce, and my life uh, fell apart. And through the years that followed, the Lord showed me that he is my strong foundation, that he is my redeemer. And I didn't need a man to do that. Um, and while marriage and having a family was is good and a godly thing, I had really made that an idol in my heart um, the first go around and had really pushed it and not waited for the Lord's very best. And um, so it took about three years. And when Lane and I, was, we were on our own, and the Lord just refined us and strengthened me in our relationship with the Lord. And then we met Tommy. Now, before um, you met Tommy, Landon was wanting a dad. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes. um, So I never wanted to, um, I always planned to be a stay-at-home mom. And so when I became a single mom, I decided to be a nanny. And so Landon would always go with me to work. And he, growing up, he saw family figure. And as he got older, he started questioning why he didn't have a daddy. And that was very hard for me because I didn't know what to say. (laughs) Um, At that point, um, I just pointed him to God and I said, he's our daddy and he will provide for us and love us and look to him. And um, it was really neat when Tommy and I met, we didn't want to push it that he was his daddy or anything, but on uh, Landon's own, we were, uh, it was St. Patrick's Day a couple years ago, and we were in a pool, and Landon said, I miss my daddy, and I said, 
who's your daddy? Because <laughs> I wasn't sure who, who he was referring to. And he said, Mr. Tommy, Mr. Tommy's my daddy. And it was just a really neat step um, in our journey as blending together as a family. And uh, actually this last year, this last summer, uh, Tommy was able to legally adopt Landon. And that was another really, <laughs> really neat step for our family because Landon, it was very important to Landon that we all have the same last name. Yeah. And so that was really neat. We're not gonna crap here, okay? okay. <laughs> We're doing real good, okay. Some of these youth girls are getting me over here. I'm not gonna look at them anymore. So anyways, hey, so uh, Tommy, you meet this girl, your aunt sets you up. We won't know if she's the crazy aunt or not, but we know every family has a crazy aunt. But that being said, she sets you up and you meet this woman and she's been married, you have a kid, and she has a kid and you're looking for love. You were just previously engaged. There's a lot of like, God, what are you doing moments. Walk us through kind of what's spiraled around in your head, some of the lies that were there, some, you know, what God was you know, wooing you to do, those kinds of things. So in my previous relationship, I had always committed myself to not, basically to, to saving myself for marriage because I knew what the Lord, the, how he viewed marriage and the benefits of marriage. And in the previous relationship, she became frustrated with that to where the wedding was eventually called off. Um, but I'm thankful that in this relationship with Devin, we started on the right foot with God and God was center in the whole thing. Um, so from that point, it gave me the strength to know, okay, Lord, you're bringing me a possible wife a possible son, what do I need to do? And so it gave me something to grab onto and to grow into and just having that strength and knowing that, okay, Lord, you're here with us, we can do this, um, was, was super, super important. And it, it really, it's really something, something neat to see what the Lord can bring out of some different situations. Now, Devin, um, you meet Tommy. I mean, I'm sure you got one hand out like I'm ready to, you know, meet this wonderful new guy. And the more you get to know him, the more awesome you realize he is. But you also got one hand up with like, I'm gonna have to punch you if I have to kind of a thing because you got this kid you're protecting too. Walk us through that, that tension. You know, what were you thinking? How did you navigate that? And Yes, it was very challenging for me because um, while well, I desired to be loved and to have that family, um, I had already done it once. And I was afraid of failure that, um, to even let him get close to us. When we first started dating, I told him he would not meet Landon for six months. Um, but after a couple dates, we realized that God's hand was in this. And I realized that by keeping it just the two of us, it was giving him a wrong view of what our life would be like. Because now that we're married, we hardly get to go on alone dates. And so I didn't want him thinking, this is how life's going to be. Um, and so God really worked through that. But yes, I was very, had a lot of fears of um, you know, am I ever going to feel comfortable with him taking Landon by himself somewhere or um, parenting together? But um, it was neat that in our dating relationship, I was able to see him as a father um, and to see how that was going to work. And the Lord just helped us be on the same page with all of that. And um, Landon was so happy to finally have a daddy that it just kind of blended us all together. Now, when you are dating, you lived an hour away. And so as this relationship continued to grow and grow and grow, it made it harder because the distance. Tell us about the moves and the different things you did in that moment. So Devin and Landon lived up near San Marcos, about an hour away from us. And it made it hard with my schedule and her schedule, trying to get together and have time together to, to just grow in that relationship. So we discussed with my parents and how we could work something out. So I ended up moving back into my parents' house and Devin and Landon moved down to my house. And that way we could glorify the Lord and show Landon that we did not want to live together till we were married. And it was neat to see that ability and that God gave us that um, opportunity that we could, we could make that work. Yeah. Well, you've heard a lot about Landon, so let's hear from Landon himself. So Landon, come on up stage, buddy. Okay, so this is Landon Anderson. He is the star of the show today. Um, Landon, tell us a little bit about why, why did you, you know, want a dad so bad? What was it? Life was very hard without a dad because we had six other kids that we had to take care of. Yeah. I was a living nanny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, 
uh, Mr. Tommy came and met him. What did you like most about Mr. Tommy when you first met him? I love that he loves the Lord and loves me. Awesome. And now that he's your dad, what's your favorite thing to do with him? My favorite thing to do with him is wrestle and do my schoolwork. Awesome. Now, y'all are building a treehouse right now too, right? How's that coming along? It's coming along really good. I got to help with it a little bit. Awesome. Well, Landon, we're excited that the journey that God has put your mom and your dad on has also included you. And I know you played a big part because when you got baptized and you made a video, you made a comment about how you began to pray for a dad. Tell us about why did you start praying for a dad? Because you had six other kids. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Well, hey, speaking of praying, Landon, would you mind closing us out in this part? And would you pray for your mom and dad and us today? Lord, I pray that everyone's life will be easier for those don't, and that people that don't have a dad will find one soon. I hope that my mom and dad will be able to grow a bigger relationship with the Lord and each other. I pray that I will um, get wised up into the Lord's hands forever. Amen. Amen. Good job. Thank you so much. You know, what you heard today was a little bit of the journey that, that Devin and Tommy went on. You know, it would have been completely acceptable to say, oh yeah, we, uh, we met later on and uh, we got married and well, I already had a kid and so, you know, Tommy was great and wonderful and so here we are today, we're at Bulverde Baptist Church, Love and Life. And kind of just skip through the things because, you know, it's none of your business. It's none of my business kind of a thing. But in hearing that, you realize the beautiful thing in, in God's grace and you see his faithfulness clearly displayed through this time. And so as I heard their story, I was like, man, we, we're, we gotta share this because, and let me just take a little sidestep real quick and let you know that everyone here, whether you like it or not, has an Anderson story. There's something in your life where God has miraculously done something great that you've chosen to keep in your back pocket and not share it. And I just wanna encourage you as your pastor, as a friend, don't. Because there's someone else who thinks that no one else knows this, or they'll think, you know, differently of you now knowing this. If anything, you just think even highly, more highly of the Andersons than, than ever before because you've seen what God has done in their life. We should not be so scared to share what God has done in our lives. God does not do this work for it just to hide it in the closet. So as I begin to, to pray through, you know, what, what scripture can we come in and, and wrap this up and really drive this home for us today, not just be a, a testimony, which in itself is, is amazing. Proverbs chapter three, starting in verse one, it says, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your hearts keep my commandments. For the length of the days and the years of life and the peace of joy, they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablets of your heart so that you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones." When we, when we look at this story, which is a, probably a very similar story that all of us, we had these moments where we thought we were doing what we were supposed to do. You know, for, for, for Tommy, I, you know, I, I'm a believer and I, I like this girl and we're going to get engaged. I'm going to stand on my moral purity and, and, and glorify God. And then all of a sudden the relationship doesn't honor that. Well, am I called to honor God or am I called to honor this person? Well, God first. And then so I, I, I think take a detour, what it feels like as, 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 a, as a failure and a setback, a disappointing moment because I'd, I'd found love, I'd found someone that was contrary to what God had called me to do. And then for, for Devin, I, I, I found a man who, who claims to love Jesus and, and, and it shows to love me. And so we get married and things start to derail quickly. And, and what do I do? Do I just continue to go along with the flow and, and serve 
and be a, be a part of this relationship, or do I stand firm with what God has called me to do and raise my family in, and, and despite the tensions here, and trust God with the results? Not everything always works out the way we think it is. Not every scenario, the way we map it out and line it up, works out the way we had planned for it to. But see, we need to understand that God's love and power, it doesn't keep us from the storms, it sustains us in the storms. If you're taking notes, you can write that in there, that God's love and power sustains us. When, when the, the path that we're on seems to kind of be, we're derailed or we're taken off course for whatever reason, we need to understand that God's love, his power, it sustains us. He says, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments for the length of the days and the years of life, the peace they will add to you. Both Tommy and Devin had to realize, what does the word of God teach me here? Who is the one that is supposed to be faithful? Who is truly supposed to be my provider? Who is the one who loves me more than anyone? And let me cling to that. In Matthew 7, we looked at the beginning of this series about two different people, the illustration that they built a house. Both people built the house. One built on a sand, which represents hearing the word of the Lord, but not putting it into practice versus the ones who heard the word of the Lord and put it into practice. Both houses encountered storms, but only one lasted through the storm because of their obedience to the word. God's love and power does not keep us from the storms. It only sustains us. In the midst of these two stories of Tommy and Devin kind of waiting and walking through three years to end up together, that was God's love and his power that sustained each of them and were molding and making each of them into who they needed to be for Jesus and then also for each other. Verses three and four says, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and men. Don't let steadfast love and, and faithfulness escape you. Do something to remind you of what God's word says about you, what, his, what God's word says about himself. Don't let yourself get in these moments and, 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 and just cast off and go, okay, all this, if God's never failed anyone in all creation except for now here and, and he chose me. That's not true. Don't, don't let those things escape you. Remind yourself of his commandments. Remind yourself what the word of God says. Not too long I was, uh, ago, I was uh, asked by uh, a friend of mine. He says, how, how do you keep your head out, out of the gutter? You know, when, when, when things don't work right and things aren't are tracking well, how is it that you can you kind of pull yourself up by your bootstraps? How, how do you go about doing that? And the truth is I, I, I'm there quite often where I question my, you know, my success or my, my faithfulness or whether I'm going to be, you know, my good enough pastor or a good enough, you know, husband or a good enough father. You know, I, I see it, you know, I, make a, I say, hey, no, we're not going to do that. And then I see a disappointment. And then, uh, you know, hey, we're going to do this. And oh, not again. You know, and I'm thinking, am I making all the wrong calls? You know, I, and, I, and I second guess myself a lot. I'm probably sure I'm the only person here that's ever, that second guesses himself. But in those moments, and I'm like, I, can I not do anything right? This person's mad. This person, you know, said this. This person thinks this. I go back to what does the word of God say about me? To know that I'm redeemed. I'm forgiven. I'm made whole. And I remind myself to what be, is true in my life, not necessarily how I feel. Because emotions, they, they, they come and go. And feelings, they, they come and go. You can be on the most romantic date with your wife and, and staring into her eyes and she's like, you're the most wonderful person ever and I love you so much. And then they deliver her food and it's burnt. And I promise you, the date whew, took a downturn immediately. Happened to me this week. My wife and I, we went out on a little date and we went to Magoo's in New Braunfels. Great place. McAdoo's, thank you. <laughs> McAdoo's. <laughs> They're thinking we went to McDonald's, right? <laughs> that's, that's more fitting. So we go to McAdoo's Seafood there in downtown New Braunfels. And I'm like, I'm gonna have this, you know, redfish, you know, on the poncha train kind of thing. And they deliver my food. And I was like, I looked at the guy. It didn't matter any of the moment I had felt my love for my wife when they delivered my $37.95 fish that was this 
big. I'm telling you, if you're reading, if you watch this, McAdoo's, I, I love y'all, but I, I'm seriously, like in my prayer, I was like, Lord, forgive my heart for the frustration, the anger that I feel for paying so much money for such little food on my plate. And I went home and I made me a plate of food when we got home. I'm serious. Feelings, they come and go. I'm out there enjoying this time and then in a moment's notice, I am not happy. But what God's word says about me, what it says about him, it's absolutely true. So don't forget his teaching. Let our hearts keep the commandments. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake us. Verses five through six, probably the most familiar verses of these whole passages. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Sometimes we are on the Lord's path and we end up derailing. Sometimes out of foolish decisions of ourselves. sometimes because of just, we lose sight of what the goal is and we've drifted and don't realize it till it's kind of too late, we're off course. Sometimes we're on the way and someone T-bones us and knocks us off course. There's all sorts of different ways in which we get off course. So how do we get back on the course? Trust the Lord. How do we get back on the course? I, I, I know I'm off and here's where it is. And both, you know, Tommy and, and, you know, and Devin are like, okay, Lord, what are you doing? I, I know what you want for me. I know that your plans for me are not to harm me, but, but how do I, am I off course or are you just taking me somewhere else? And trust the Lord. When we are in these moments, despite how we got there, the way we get back is trusting the Lord. Now, here's the thing. We may not like the path the Lord's gonna take us on to get back on the path we need to be on, but we need to trust the Lord. Now, speaking about the best way, not just trusting the Lord because we don't need to trust ourselves. Verses seven and eight, be not wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. He, he's saying, trust the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding in all your ways, acknowledge him. He'll make paths you straight. And by the way, don't trust yourself. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Because I don't know about you, but for me, every bad decision I've ever made, guess who was there making the decision? Me. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Trust the Lord with all of your heart. But what if we don't like where we're going? What if we don't like the situation? Trust the Lord. For, for Devin and, and Tommy, you can imagine the moment being a mom walking out of a, a home that you believed that God had provided for safety and security and, only, and, and realized being on the sidewalk with only your infant and a diaper bag was a safer environment. You talk about feeling lonely, you talk about feeling desperate in those moments. God, where are you right now? God's like, I'm right here. For Tommy going, okay, you know, I want, I want to be a, a, a man that my kids will look up to. I want to be a man of integrity and honesty. I want, I, want to, I want to live my life in this manner, but you're asking me to compromise for this, but to give up what God has called me to, a legacy that I'm working for and towards to create. And those moments, this, this tension, I, I We've all been in those moments. They're just different for all of us. My encouragement to all of us today is understanding in those moments, as a believer, God's love and his power will sustain you. It's not gonna keep the rain from coming. It's not gonna keep lightning from striking right outside your back door. But it will sustain you. His love and his power Will sustain you. And the other thing is, in those moments, you're thinking, well, how do I get where I need to get? Trust the Lord. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Trust the Lord. You say, well, pastor, how do I know what the Lord is saying? How do I know that it's God speaking to me right now? I, the best way I can explain it, and I don't want to be like, you'll just know. That's, no. Here's what I'm going to tell you. And I've used this illustration before because it's the best one I can remember. Growing up, we lived in the country and we had rock roads. 
I can always tell when my dad was coming home by the way the tires sounded on the rock driveway. We had the windows up. We didn't have central air till I was almost in high school. So we always, on a cool day, we always raised up all the windows in the two-story house and let the house breathe and, you know, that kind of stuff and put fans in the windows. So having open windows in my house was a very common thing. But I could always tell when my dad was coming home because the way the rock sounded on the driveway, the speed of the car coming up with the driveway, the way it turned the corner, the way the rocks would move on the ground. I could hear all that from across the house. And I could be like, dad's home because I'd heard that car come up the driveway a thousand times. I could tell when my mom come up the driveway and I could tell when it was someone else, you know, a FedEx guy, delivery guy or someone else. I could be like, who's, who's at her house? Because I didn't recognize that sound. Church, if we never spend time understanding God's sound, if we never spend time reading his word to hear his voice where it's most clear I can only tell you that you will struggle. I know my time's up. It's 12. We'll, we'll wrap it up soon. <laughs> Here's the thing. If we don't ever spend time reading where his voice is the most clear, when all the other noises in life are going on, we'll have, this, we'll have a tr trouble distinguishing which one is his voice. Church, hear is the most clearest way to understand. So when we say the words, trust the Lord with all your heart, lean not in your own understandings, don't be wise in your own eyes, we understand and we, under, we know his voice because we've been there, we've read it, we've heard it multiple times over and over and over and over. Like tires on a gravel driveway, I know his voice. Many of you, it's Mother's Day. I was to stick you in a crowded room even if your mother had, has already been passed away with the Lord, if you heard that laughter in a room with 200 people, you'd go, mom's here. Because you've heard that laugh a thousand times. Church, are we that familiar with God's word that we can hear that laugh, that voice among every other voice in our life? For Tommy and Devin, when every voice is crying out, do this, do this, stay, go, run, just You've already made a commitment. Go through with the promise. We're, you know, we love each other. We know we're going to get married. We already, you know, he's already calling me daddy, but I haven't even adopted yet. When the world's saying all these things, how do we know what God's word, what God's voice is telling us right here? Know that in all those situations, God's love and his powerful, his love and his power is there to sustain you. And no matter where you are, trust the Lord with all your heart. Let's close in a word of prayer. Lord, thank you that despite every distraction we may come and face in life, despite every time we get off course, we're derailed, whether intentionally, unintentionally, or just didn't even realize it, you're there to bring us back and your power and your love will sustain us. Thank you today is the day to remind ourselves to trust you, not to be wise in our own eyes, but to trust you. Thank you, Jesus, for reminding us where true wisdom comes from and where perfect direction comes from. In your name we pray, amen. Now, before you dismiss, all the moms, don't forget on your way out, we've got bookmarks for you. I use mine, even though I'm not a mom, I use it for a visual illustration. Grab yours on your way out. Moms, if we can pray with you about anything, anyone here, well, Deacons and myself will be down here as we dismiss. We'd love to pray with you. Have a wonderful, wonderful Mother's Day.